Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the this webinar. This webinar, we are going to be discussing everything about suppliers. So I'm going to show you how to set them up, and then we're going to go through the reports. Um, I am happy to show you certain processing features of suppliers if you wish. Most people, however, do prefer that I just do the basic setting up and the reports because that in itself guys can take about an hour and a half. Um, I do apologize about that, but unfortunately the reports can be quite lengthy to explain which reports you use for what and how you compare them. So guys, to get started, you've got your general setting up of a supplier. So this is pretty much similar to when we did everything about customers, except here you go edit supplier account and you would need to enter your account code and a description. Guys, when entering a description, it doesn't matter what you're creating, whether it is a customer, a supplier, or an inventory item, please don't use special characters. Hash exclamation at um, double inverted commas for inches, single inverted commas. Excel doesn't like it, and if you need to export anything to get it back into Pastel, it's going to be a problem. So do not use special characters, alphanumeric only. It is the safest bet. Then you can select a category if you set up categories. You can do that just by going edit supplier categories. To the postal address and the physical address, as well as the contact name telephone number, fax number, mobile, and email. Now, guys, something nice to remember is that although you can select the contacts here, if you then go to your processing um, and you select to print and email, for example, sorry, guys, let me just quickly... Okay, sorry, apparently that's only for customers. I thought it was for suppliers. As well, I do apologize, guys. Um, there is actually a suggestion that, that please get included, but with customers, you can specifically set different email addresses and for the documents and different email addresses for the statements. So I thought that implemented that. I do apologize. I obviously got my de details wrong. But you would enter all of those details and then you would go to the processing tab. The processing tab then allows you to select whether you want to enter your values for the specific customer using the exclusive value or the inclusive value. You can also set up a default tax type if you would like. Now, guys, I strongly advise setting up a default tax type at the very least. The reason for this is that the tax type 00 is not included in any of your tax reports. The only place that you would see it is if you actually go and view the reconciliation report, and then it will come up and tell you that it used 00, in which case you would have to process a whole bunch of reversals and then redo the transactions. So the simplest way would just be to select your standard rated that. That way, you know it's going to show up on your tax reports, and it's just easier to reconcile. So that's what a default tax type does. If there's no default tax, it uses 00 by default, and human error, we sometimes forget to change things. If you force the tax type, this means that no other tax type will be able to be used. This is the only tax type that will show up on all the documents. And if you need to change it, you're going to be unable to. So it is up to you. You can force it. Yes, it does mean that it will always be the tax type. And that it does leave less room for error. But if there are instances where it does need to be changed, it's now no longer going to be able to be changed. You're going to have to go through a number of steps in order to default the tax. Then, guys, if you're using multi-currency, it will ask you the currency code. If the currency code is grayed out, it's because there's transactional history. You would then set up if it's open item or balance forward, and your terms, is it based monthly based or day based? And what are the terms? So current 30, 60, 90, 120, or 7, 14, 28 days, depending. So you would set up 
the days depending on what your supplier has given you. So the supplier sets the terms and you just enter them into the system accordingly. Then you can set up early terms. So your supplier may provide you with a discount if you pay the invoice early. So for example, you get 2.5% within five days from the invoice date. So if we had to create a new one, and then set up 5%, for example, uh, seven days, and then you can see from last day of period, or from the invoice. So it depends again what terms are given to you. And then you would go, you can see your balances, additional options, these are your user defined field. So if there's something that you need, you can enter it here. And then you've got your other information, which is your electronic communication. So objection to processing. This is if. There is no objection or you want to integrate with the Office 365. So guys, these are things that are specific to Sage 50 Cloud Partner and Express. So if you're on version 18, 17, 14, these options will not be there. From Sage 50C, these options now are here and you do need to either select them or deselect them. If you are using Office 365 integration and nothing's pulling through, it's because this is unticked. You would then click on save and that's how you create a supplier in pastel. The other option is to use a Excel spreadsheet. And for that, you can find the layout by going to help, pastel help, and I'm not sure if it's going to launch. And guys, there are specific layouts. So in that help file, you would then type import export it would come up with the data overview and right at the bottom of your page are your layouts. So you would select the supplier layout. The other option is just to create one supplier, export that supplier to a CSV file. Please make sure it is .csv comma delimited and include the headings. That way you know exactly what information you require. So guys, once that's done, the other thing that you do need to look at is your setup supplier control. This does require sole access mode, which means that no other windows or users can be logged in while you are checking your supplier control. Now, if you created your company using the setup assistant, this will all be done automatically for you. If you did not, before you can even create a supplier, you will need to ensure that this has been entered. So firstly, you will need to select your supplier control account, as well as a cash book discount account. You can then select your tax on discount line. So print tax percentage, print the tax amount or no tax printing. So what do you want to see when you print your documents? What is the default tax type for financial lines? Guys, bearing in mind that your setup supplier accounts overrides this option, just so you know. And then if you are using Sage 50C or Sage Pastel Accounting um, and you're using the partner version, guys, you will have the option of either using a good received note or not. If you are using Express, you will not see this. You do not have the option of using a goods received note. Now, a goods received note allows you to bring in the stock before you get the supplier invoice. So if you need to start selling before you've received, sorry guys, give me a sec. <laughs> Pardon me. If you receive, um, or if you need to sell that stock before you receive the supplier invoice and you've gotten the goods, you can bring them in using a good receive note and then you would link that good receive note to a supplier invoice if there are any changes in the value you would fix them on the supplier invoice and it would make the changes accordingly by doing journals etc in the background again guys you've got your user defined fields but this is just your defaults so you can put these in here by default they'll show on your 
set up suppliers that will not be filled in. Then you can check your remittances. So these are your statements. Generally, you don't send a statement to your supplier unless you've got a query and you show them what's on your system. Here you can set up your paper style assistant. This would be based on the kind of paper you are using. So are you using continuous paper? Are you using A4 paper? Are you using pre-printed paper? Are you using plain paper? It's very simple what you would select. It does give you an explanation. And then you can select you always want to print in balance forward format. So as you move through the periods, it'll just give you a running total and it will only show you the transactions that happened in that period. Or if you deselect that, it will show you all outstanding invoices for the current financial year. Then you can also select do you want to see your aging on the remittances and what is that aging total and how many copies you want to print and then you can also create messages. Most people don't really set up their supplier remittance because it's more for your record than for that of your supplier. The only time you would use it is to query something with them. Then you've got your defaults again. So this is when you create a supplier. What is going to come up generally? So you choose what you use most common. Are most of your clients month based or day based? If they are month based, what are their terms or what, or what are the terms that your suppliers have given you? Are they current? Are they 30 days? Are they 60 days? So guys, these are the terms given to you, but it's what is set the most by by your suppliers. And you would then select that so that when you create a new supplier, it's very quick. You only have to change one or two small things instead of having to select everything. And then if you go to description, you can just change these options if you would like or leave them as is. So it's just the descriptions of the lines. So when you export to Excel, these are the descriptions that are going to come up. Guys, and you can also go to set up supplier documents. Again, you require sole access mode. And here you can just check your document type. So if you do want to change a document name, you can do it here. I would strongly advise that you do not change the entry type. Please don't mess with this, guys. I've had people before who have put this to ridiculous things. Don't. Um, it actually just causes a lot of issues. Generally, your supplier invoice is set to your purchases, your return and debit is set to purchase returns, and your credit to supply again is purchases. It's that simple. Um, your GRNs go to your goods received note. If you are using GRNs and your purchase orders are always in an open batch. So guys, there's not much that you can do here. The only other thing is setting up your users' um, numbers. So if you're going to use a separate set of numbers per user, you would do that here. And you can set them up here. So you would select the user and then you would enter the new number in that way. If you are actually doing a. Um, sorry, I will answer the question in a second, but if you are doing a recon to see which users entered what you can actually see because you would have given them all a unique number to or a unique number range. So it's up to you whether you wish to do that or not. Um, then the question that I've got is on the supplies in Express, there is no description available. Is this correct? I will have to check and actually come back to you. I'm sorry about that. I wasn't aware that that was different. So I will double check with, um, with support and just make sure about that. So I will send you a mail myself um, and I will I will advise. I would assume it probably is correct, but I would like to first check because if not, then I will log it on your behalf. Um, OK, guys, are we happy with with the basic setting up of a supplier, your documents, what you would go set up in your documents, your supplier control, as well as creating a supplier? If you're happy, please type um, happy or no questions. If you have a question, I'm going to just give you a few seconds to type that out for me.
Guys, also, please feel free while I am talking to ask your questions. Um, I will stop. Or alternatively, I'll wait until the end and then go through it. Not the end of the whole webinar, just the end of the section. So guys, that being said, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to move on to the reporting side of things. So a lot of the reporting, if you attended my webinar on customers, is very similar. But we did run over time and I will have to be a little bit quicker on the reports than what I wanted to be. So we're going to go here. In order for all your different customer reports, you've got view, customer, and the first thing is your print documents. Now, guys, this is if you need to reprint. So you've updated the batch. If you're using good received notes and partner, these are updated automatically. There is no option for you to do it in batch mode or on completion of document. GRNs are always updated on completion of document. But if you need to reprint them, you can come here. Guys, you will receive this message irrespective of what the open batch is. The open batch may have something to do with your suppliers, for example, and may have nothing to do with them. You can either click on yes and just double check if it does have anything to do with them, or you can click on no. So you can quickly look and go, OK, no, I'm happy it doesn't have anything to do with my suppliers. I'm happy to run my reports. And then you would enter your account start or end, or you can leave it blank. Documents start and end, you can enter a range or leave it blank. And then, guys, here you need to enter your date. So where do you, are you printing it just for example for August? Um, and from where in August? So this is literally printing it from the beginning of this company. In this case, I would change this. So I'd say from the 1st of August to the 31st of August 2019. Obviously, this will depend if it's two digits or four digit when you set it up and then you select your output option. So screen, printer, PDF or email. And then do you want it to print unprinted only, print supporting documents or use home currency? If you say OK, it's then going to run through it. Guys, unfortunately, I don't know how many GRNs there are. So hopefully, great. It's not going to take long. And then it will print it based on the layout that you selected. If your layout looks weird, that means that there might be a problem with your paper style. Just go to File, Print a Font Setup, and check what is your paper style set to, and you can then change it accordingly. If you are printing on pre-printed continuous paper, leave it as is, although to screen it'll look weird. It's fine when you're printing it'll look right. So that is one way to check if things are a bit odd. OK, obviously I didn't. Ref oh, yeah, sorry. I only did it for one document. Um, remember when doing that, guys, that you do select uh, copy to all documents. If it is a document printing thing, you can also select copy to all tabs. If you select copy to all users, it excludes the paper style assistant. It only includes everything else. So just something to bear in mind. And guys, the rest of the things are pretty similar in the view. So if you go suppliers, print documents, supply invoice, it's pretty much the same layout. It's just a different document. Are you happy with, with the print option and what it's there for? It's there to print stuff if you need it. It's that simple. So no, no real surprises there. Then you've got your... Supplier analyze purchases. Now, guys, this is pretty important because this is where you're going to check, okay, this is what's happening with my suppliers, and I want to see what I'm buying the most of, what I'm buying the least of, that type of thing. And you'll probably run this together with probably your customer and analysis. What are they buying? What should I be purchasing more of? Now, when it says purchase journal, please bear in mind that although it says purchase journal, this is only going to pull transactions that you actually did the process supplier documents. If you went to process journals and you did a purchase journal, it will not show here. So guys, this report, as you can see, is date driven. It is not period driven, and that is important. Because if you are running a report that is date driven, it doesn't matter what period you processed it in, it will pick it up due to the 
date. So if you do have out of period processing, this is how you're going to pick it up. You're going to view this report. You'll select your date. You'll select your document type. So do you want to see only GRNs? Do you only want to see the invoices? Do you only want to see GRNs and returns? Or do you want to see invoices and returns? So it depends what you want to see. You can select your range of documents or you can leave the starters blank and the end with Zs. That will select everything within the specified range. You can choose whether you want to see details or not, whether you want to print descriptions or not. If you are using multi-currency, do you want to use a foreign currency? And guys, if you're printing to screen, you can select this option. But if you're going to print to paper, please don't. It's a waste of paper. New page per account item or type. So if we go OK here, sorry, I'm just selecting a small range. It's going to bring through everything that has an August date. Now, I chose to print descriptions and see details. If we rerun that, this is what we see. So if you see, hang on, this report total is different to a period driven report. This is where you are going to want to see those details, and this is where you're also going to view your detailed ledger. So guys, if your detailed ledger differs to this report, there's chances that you do have out of period processing. That report is date driven. It will pull anything with an August date, whereas a period driven report. So these are still date driven. Will show like this. Now, this is a period driven report. So this is going to show all the transactions that were processed in August's period, irrespective of the date used. So, for example, if I use August period, but March's date, the March invoice will show here with March's date, but it has August period. So, guys, this is the report that you would pull. You would then go, OK, let me check. Yes, does is what is the date here for the opening balance? What is my date for my actual transaction? And as I said, you would pull this report in conjunction to your analyze purchases because purchases is date driven. This is period driven. It's the fastest way to actually see what's happening. Run those two reports together and you'll probably pick up pretty quickly where you've got out of period processing. So guys, back to your analyzed purchases, then you've got items per supplier. So here you can see what items you are getting from which supplier. So again, you've got your output method, guys, there are loads of output methods, screen, printer, Excel, Word, HTML, email, ASCII is a TXT file. If you don't know how to read TXT files, I wouldn't do it. That can be very confusing and PDF. You can choose whether you want to view your supplies by code, description, or category. It will change the um, order that they come up. Your supplier start and end. Start with it blank. End with a whole bunch of Zs to select every supplier or select your range. Again, your document type. What do you want to see? If you're using multi stores, it's going to ask you from and to store again, only something available and partner. Then you've got your inventory code and start. So guys, you can analyze now by what inventory you're ordering and then your date start and end. Do you want to see the descriptions? Do you want to rather show inventory totals? If we click on OK, it's going to show me, OK, this is my supplier. Here are the items that I'm ordering from them most. This was quantity, that was a unit cost, that was the total cost. And if we rerun and we view by details, we can then actually see which invoice this is linked to. So again, guys, if you're doing a recon and something looks weird, you can come and view this. And so in this case, you'd probably print your documents and then you'd come and view this and go, hang on, something's off right. I was sure that I ordered this and you can see what happened. Is it on a different supplier invoice? Did possibly that line go missing? 
this is how you're going to hopefully find that. You can view those two things together. Then guys, if we go again, um, your detailed ledger is one for you to check what's happening with your suppliers. So what's running through my detailed ledger? Again, you've got your different options. You can view for this year or last year. Depending on your options, depends what will print. If you want me to go through each option, guys, I can, but bearing in mind, as I said, that can take a lot of time. So I'm not going to run through all of them unless necessary. I have covered most of them. So guys, here we can have a look. We can see what happened. We can double check, okay, this is the opening balance. What happened here? What do I owe? What's happening? And I can check that against my remittance. I can also pull this report if I have out of period processing as advised and check it that way. So this is a very important report and this is kind of the main part. Most people pull a supplier detailed ledger to check various things. I'm telling you how what reports can complement this report to make re reconning your accounts a little easier. So your detailed ledger is something that you'll do if you want to check how you did for the month. And it gives you an overview of what happened in every single customer, uh, every single supplier. Sorry, guys, supplier. Then you've got your detailed ledger by entry type. Now, by supplier pulls it by supplier, but by entry type, we'll pull it specifically based on the entry type that was used. So let's see. Can do this for the entire year. Again, guys, this is a period driven report. And here you'll see now it's telling me there my customer is and that I entered the payments entry type for them. And I did a purchases. So it's going to bring that all up and show me for each entry type. What happened with that customer? These are the entry types I used. That can help if you need to do a reversal. So your straightforward detailed data helps for reconning and stuff. But if you see that, okay, I do have out of period processing, what do I do now? Guys, this can help you see what entry type you use. So if you do need to go and reverse it using a journal instead of possibly doing a supplier return and debit, maybe it's something that happened in last year. Using this report will help you because then you know, although that was a document, you can actually go and process the reversal using the process journals purchases entry type. So this can help you to know what entry type you need to use for reversals. Very handy for that. Then guys, if we go to our outstanding orders and GRNs, it's very simple. You've got your summary, your details by supply, and your details by item. And it is exactly that. What are my outstanding purchase orders? So I've sent this through to my supplier. What's happening? Do I need to give them a ring and ask them what's going on? Guys, I've sent this purchase order. Why aren't I getting my stock? What's happening with it? That's basically, you can pull the summary to have a look and see what's outstanding. And you can pull it for your goods received notes. So I've got these good receive notes, but I'm not getting that supply invoice. I actually need to know what's happening. I need to make this payment, et cetera. So guys, a summary is just going to give you a list with an amount. If you then want to go and pull it by supplier, it can then help you because obviously then you'll know which supplies you're getting hold of. Okay, so do I have any outstanding? Yes, I do. Okay, which suppliers do I need to phone? And you do the same for purchases. So it's pretty straightforward what you use it for. It's there to check so that you can inquire. Where's my stock? What's happening with it? Where's my invoice? I haven't received it. That type of thing. Guys, then you've got your balances. It's exactly that. It's a report that shows your balances up to a specific point. So depending on your filters, depends on what you'll see. But that's that's what it is. It's just going to show your balances. So either you can see it per period or you can just see your totals. Here are my totals. This is everything that I owe all of my suppliers. So it's a summary of your creditors book or you can choose to 
actually see each one. So I don't want to see all the, the periods and what I owe in each period. I just want to know this is my creditor's book. This is how it's made up, who I owe what to. Now, guys, your monthly periodic has a lot of reports in it. You've got your remittances, which are your statements. This is where you would come to double check your processing. So when you get a statement from your supplier, you're going to come here and you're going to just double check it, especially if you have a query. You're going to select your filters. Now, guys, if you get a message, there, there are no customer supplies in the specified range. It's probably because at the category you left it as none. And if you do have categories, you need to select the first category and the last category, including none. Often people either leave it at none or they have selected something else and the customer supply they're looking for is in none. The best way, select the first, select the last. Then select your payment term, so monthly base, day base, both. That's also something if it's set to day base, for example, and you only have two day base suppliers, guys, rather select both. This year, so untick for last year. This year, select your period start and end. Print from term. So where do you want to print from? First aging all the way to fifth. Balance range. Now, guys, what this means is not I only want to see um, the credits on the account, I only want to see the debits. What this will show is all of your suppliers with a credit balance or all of your suppliers with a debit balance. It will show all the transactions on that statement, but it will either end in a debit balance or a credit balance. You can choose one or the other or both and then show zero accounts. If you don't owe money, do you want to see it? Probably not. You can say no. And then use foreign currency. Basically, you click on OK, and it will bring up your state, your remittances, and you can double check them. So once you've double checked them, if you're happy with them, great. If you need to raise anything, you can do so. Guys, you can also use this if you are having a problem with your age analysis. But bearing in mind, if you view this report and it looks right, and you go view supplier monthly periodic age analysis, and it looks wrong, your age analysis pulls from open item. Your statement might look different because it's pulling from balance forward. And in that case, you probably have open item corruption. If you do have open item corruption and you do need to print statements, normally this wouldn't be an issue with your suppliers, but it would be with your customers. My advice to you would be print them in balance forward for that month and then send the data in for us to fix it. Sorry, just on a note, guys, um, a little tip there. So your age analysis, again, it's a way for you to check how you're tracking what it, does your payments history look like? Who do you owe what to and when? You would select your filters accordingly, guys. Again, print from terms, details. Now, details can be important, especially if maybe you are having a difficult month. We've all been there. You need to make a couple of arrangements. Listen here. I know that I, I have 30 days, but I can only pay you half. Can we make an arrangement? So having the details there can be helpful. And you can then see and quickly phone them and say, look, I've got a problem. I'm sorry, I just need to make an arrangement. Um, also helps on that customer side. You can phone your customer and be like, hey, what's happening? You kind of overdue. Um, or you can say none. So if you just want a quick look, you want to see what's happening. OK, this is what's outstanding. Where do I have a problem? Is it an actual problem or a matching problem? And guys, if you're worried and you want to find your open item corruption, this is the best way to do it, is you're going to print the transactions. You don't need to have details, but you do need to print transactions. The reason for that is that it'll actually print all of the transactions that have happened 
um, in the range that you've specified. So technically, you should run this up until the last period. And it will show everything that's happened. And the last thing right at the bottom that you'll get on one of your, probably the supplier that has a problem, is it'll say OI diff. And if you get that OI diff, so you run data integrity, it doesn't come up. But you can see there's a problem. Something isn't matching. Um, your detailed ledger isn't corresponding to your age analysis or your remittance. You go and choose to run your remittance balance forward. Suddenly, your remittance and your age analysis doesn't work. Nine out of ten times, guys, it's open item corruption. You run it with all of your transactions, and on that supplier you look for the last entry, OI diff. If it says OI diff, you email support, you tell them the problem, and, that, and you send your data in for a data fix. So the age analysis, while used to double-check your aging, and again, you use it against your detailed ledger. It's also used to find open item corruption. Guys, do we have any questions so far before I move on? I'm going to move on, but if you have a question, please type it through to me. I'll stop. So, guys, the next thing that you have in your monthly periodic is your tax age analysis. Now, again, you would use this against your actual VAT report. So, you see something isn't working. You can double check your suppliers by viewing your tax age analysis. So, it's going to show you the tax values. And you can then double check if those are correct. It's, it's basically an age analysis, but just for the tax portion. You would use that when you go and view your tax report. You feel there's an issue. That's the report that I would run against. See if you use 00, zero or if you use the correct tax. Not a difficult report. Then, guys, you've got your overdue supplies report. Now, I don't know if I have any overdue. Um, but again, select your filters, guys. Just read the filters carefully and double check that you are entering them correctly. Basically, 90% of your filters are very straightforward. Um, like with your statements, the category, make sure that's done. But otherwise, guys, if you read your filters carefully, you shouldn't have any issues. If we click on OK, here you're going to see my overdue report. So it's going, OK, yeah, we've, we've got a lot of stuff overdue. And you can then check why it's overdue. So it'll drill down to your detailed ledger. As I said, guys, your detailed ledger is a very important part of reporting. So this will show you where, what happened when. And you can then go and check why is this happening, where is it happening, why do I owe this? What do I need to do to rectify it? So this is very important to ensure that you keep a good credit rating. You don't really want to generate a supplier overdue report. You actually want a blank report because otherwise it means that you're not managing your debt very well. Invoices due will actually tell you when your invoices are due. Again, guys, it's very important that you select your filters carefully, especially basis. You should be checking that that report is clear or as clear as possible. So this will just show you your invoices that are due at the moment. What's due? When is it due? How is it due? But if something does come up, guys, something to be aware of is your filters. This will come up. It's not overdue. It's actually only due at the end of September. I did this in August. But my dates 
are the problem here. So just something to bear in mind. So that's how you can see what invoices are due, prepare for them, make sure that those are paid. Nice, quick, simple way to play your suppliers. And then you've got your unmatched open items. So guys, if you're looking at your age analysis and you've got a lot of positive and negative, but over multiple periods. So you see a positive 5,000, but then you in 120 days and you see a negative 5,000 in 90 days and everything just seems to be everywhere. This is where you're going to come to unmatched open item. This will help you to see what's happening. It's probably that that supplier is open item and that a lot of stuff isn't matched. That's when you'll get that positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative through your aging and it looks really bizarre and printing with transactions won't help. In that case, you need to print without transactions to see it and then you need to come here. And here it's going to ask you, do you want what's in an open batch, what's posted or all? Your choice. I'd probably go with posted. It's written to your GL. Then what do you want to see? Do you want to see payments, returns and credit notes, original invoices or all? This year. And then your periods start and end. So this way you can quickly fix your aging. You can have a look and it's going to tell you, OK, yeah, guys, we've got a whole lot of stuff that is not matched. It's not that much. So. Like 100 bucks, but still, this is where you can come have a look and then, you know, OK, match uh, process, match open items, select the supplier and you can now go and quickly match those things. So it'll show you what's unmatched. It's a very nice, quick, easy Report to pool. And then guys, you've got your print letters. So this is if you're sending stuff to them. Your print letters are, are from your notes in pastel. So if you use the notes facility, that's what that print letters is. Or you can use Word. So you can print your letters using Word. And you can print your label same way. These labels are if you use Forms Designer or you can print your labels using Microsoft Word. Guys, this can be a bit tricky because it does run certain scripts. And if those things are not entered properly, it can cause issues when generating them. In the event that that happens, you can contact support and they can try to assist you. Nine out of 10 times though, they might help you just delete it and start from scratch. Technically, you should only use this if you actually know how mail merge works. But we do have some documentation on that. Guys, your listings are straightforward listings. You can view your accounts or your categories with your accounts. If you choose to show details, it's going to show you everything. So it's going to show you if it's balanced forward. It's going to show you if you've set up a default tax. It's going to give you everything you need. If you don't want to see your user defined fields, you can take that off. And if you don't want to see your details, it'll just give you a list and give you very basic. This is the type balance for the open item. This is the currency if you're using multi currency and partner. These are the terms that are set up and this is the category. So guys, your list can be used if you need to, again, contact people. You would use your list there or if you feel something has been misconfigured. So it's not right. You need to have a look. You go and view your list. Then your categories will just list all the categories. And guys, if you make use of Sage Pay Payments, this is where you sign up to pay your suppliers using Sage Pay. There is a wizard that you will run every month where it will bring through the invoices and you will just tick which ones to pay. That will go off your Sage Pay account. You will need to make sure there's money in that account. On that account, you will then pull that into Bank Manager and allocate it accordingly. That is your Sage Pay payments order trail. So it'll show you these are the payments that you've made. Here they are. And again, if your supplier is saying that they didn't capture things, this is where you go, OK, here it is. Sorry, I did. And here's a proof of payment. Please correct your records. 
And guys, those are all of the reports for your suppliers. Does anyone have any questions about the reports? Which reports you use for what? Um, that type of thing. Does anyone have any questions on that? If you don't, guys, you can say no questions. Okay, um, so guys, uh, luckily that didn't go as long as two weeks ago. Um, so basically, I've told you how to set it up and what your reports are used for. Would you like me to take you through basic processing? Is there anyone who doesn't know how to process suppliers? Bearing in mind that partner has certain things expressed doesn't. So partner has a good receive note and partner also has something called an additional costs invoice. Would you like me to explain those two to you? I have basically explained good receive note. Would you like me to explain what an additional cost invoice is? OK, so this is only available in partner. If you are running express, you will not have it. But basically, when you process a supplier invoice, we're going to take goods received out of it. You've processed that supplier invoice, but let's say, for example, you're also making use of multi-currency. There are certain costs that are incurred when you are getting stock from overseas, and those are import tax and stuff. Those are additional costs. So you've got the cost of the actual item, and then you've got the additional costs, and the additional costs may not be part of that original invoice you would then actually generate an additional costs invoice. Either you can put this against the item, for example, so you would link that, as I am, to a actual invoice here. So I'm going to go, OK, there we go. I'm linking it right here to this one. And guys, bearing in mind that the additional cost invoice might not go to the same supplier as the original invoice. So you do have that option. For example, you're paying courier fees. You want that to be part of the cost, but it's going to go to um, your courier company, for example. So that's the supplier invoice you're going, additional cost invoice you're going to do. Here we're going to go link. And then here it's going to bring up my items. So this is so that I can include these costs in these items. So if, for example, the import fee was 3,000 Rand, I would have to manually work that out over these items and go, right, um, how am I going to split that? Am I going to do an even split? Am I going to do, you know, whatever? So I'd have to pick up my calculator, work it out. Is there tax? Isn't there tax? It's import tax. So is it 6%? Is it 100% tax? So you select your options and then you enter your values. And what it's going to do is it's going to actually add these as an additional cost to this item. And that can be pretty handy because now it's in the cost of the item. So if you've said that your gross profit needs to be 15%, this is an accurate way to ensure that your gross profit is 15 or 20 or 25, whatever you've said it as, because these costs are no longer being ignored. They're actually part of the item because it costs you to bring those goods in. And processing it is basically the same as processing a supplier invoice. The only addition is that you would need a calculator to work out if whatever the cost is, because normally, even if it's a career fee, you either split it evenly or you're going to split it accordingly. It's up to you how you split it, but that's how it works. Guys, does anyone have any questions on the, sorry, supply invoice number? Does anyone have any questions? 
on what an additional cost invoice is and what it's used for. So that's quite a cool thing to have, much like having recurring invoicing is pretty cool for customers in partner. So these are features that are only available in partner. They are not available in Express. Hey guys, is there anything else that you want me to, to run through processing wise? As I said, a good receive node is exactly that, how it looks. It looks like this. And again, you basically enter it exactly like you would a supply invoice. They will give you a delivery note and you will enter it accordingly. So you will enter your code, you'll put in your value. If it's there, if you don't know the value, you can put anything, but guys, it does run the risk of when you're selling the item, it's going to be sold at the incorrect cost. So be as accurate as you can be here. And you would just say next document and it will update your stock immediately. So people use a good receive note when they receive the stock before they can get a supplier invoice. When you use a good receive note, if you try to process a supplier invoice, it will not allow you to, or it will, but not using item codes. So when your good receive note is mandatory, and those are your options. Either you always use it or you don't. You cannot change to item here. If you set it to never, then you can process to items. But because mine is set to mandatory, the only way to bring items in is to go to link and to select my good receive notes. I don't have any though, but that's what I would have done. Okay, guys, if no one has any other questions, then um, that is it for this webinar. I do hope that it was informative. I hope that you guys learned something. I hope that knowing how best to use those reports will help you in future to quickly find what's wrong or to quickly reconcile your accounts, make sure that you are in good standing with your creditors. Um, that being said, guys, I will post this recording onto Sage City by latest next week, Tuesday. All the supporting documentation and videos that I have on it, I will be posting as well. So things like uh, basic supplier reporting. It's not all of the reports, but it does just give you an overview of the most common ones. Um, payment terms. I've got a document on that, which is a very nice read. So all of those supporting things that tie in with this, I'll put there. In two weeks time, guys, I'm doing everything about inventory. So if you do use inventory, this is a really important webinar to attend as in this webinar, I actually show you how to set up your general ledger so that you get the most out of your reporting. So guys, that is everything about inventory. It probably isn't going to be as short as this one was. Um, we're probably looking at more like what the everything about customer was. M minimum an hour to an hour and a half. So please bear that in mind. And that is happening in two weeks time. Otherwise, guys, I hope that you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, please remember to sign up for Sage City if you haven't done so and keep looking at those posts. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me via Sage City. I'm happy if you guys want to friend me. It's not a problem. I do try to uh, monitor Sage City as much as possible. Um, at this point, it's me and another gentleman, but both of us are happy to help you. Otherwise, guys, have a wonderful weekend and hopefully I'll see you in two weeks time. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. To those of you that I need to give answers to, I will be sending those answers through to you individually, probably by close of business next week, Monday. If you have no questions, guys, you're welcome to log out. I will stay available for a few moments in case there is anything else.